Most backbone components have an internal method called initialize, and its purpose is to execute code. Now, initialize is commonly used to watch for any changes applied to models, but I don't really need that for the web app I'm creating. Also, if the model changes, it's usually the result of some information being passed from a web form, and that information needs to be saved somehow using either a database or something known. However, it's still a good idea to see how this watching for model changes process works as it's one of the best ways to understand initialize. So in this video, them in our web app, however we want to. We can locate the attributes and load them onto a web page, or we can change them all together. Now, changing model attributes might cause issues inside of our Backbone web app. Parts of the code may be expecting the attributes to be of a certain value, and if these attributes change, these other parts I'm talking about might be unable to perform certain tasks. So it's a good idea to watch for such changes and be alerted when they occur. All this gets done with the help of four Backbone methods, initialize, get, set, and on. Again, the initialize method runs as soon as a model instance is created. Once I attach an initialize function to my base model, it will run whatever code is inside of it. The code inside of my initialize method will start monitoring our models, looking out for changes. Get does exactly as it sounds. It gets or finds specific properties of our model to use however we see fit. Set performs two functions. It changes already existing model properties, but it can also add new ones even after we create the instance. We'll use on to actually trigger any actions that should happen whenever a model changes. And a quick note, on is another example of a backbone event method being mixed in with other backbone components. So let's go back to singleflower.js. And inside our model, I'm first going to add a comma after the default property, and then go back to our snippets.txt file and highlight lines 66 through 68, highlight them, copy them, and I'm going to paste them directly below my defaults object. And I'm gonna clean up my code a little bit here and save that. So on line 11, I've added my initialize function and inside of it is a simple console message telling me that a model instance has been created. It's also using the this.get method to give me both the name and the price of the model instance. Now again, initialize runs any time a model instance is created. And since I've created three model instances so far, I should get three console messages. I'm also going to get rid of these console.log statements back in Browser. So save this and go back to Chrome and I'm going to navigate to my web page. And I'm going to open up the browser console. I'm going to highlight and copy the code on line 70 to 73, highlight it, copy it, and I'm going to go back to single flower model, and I'm going to place it inside my already existing initialize function. And let's save that. So my initialize method now contains a this.on statement, meaning that any actions I add inside of it will execute as soon as properties of a model instance change. It doesn't need to specifically know what model instance is changing. Heirloom roses, rainbow roses, it doesn't matter. Whenever any model instance changes, this.on will apply the actions to that model instance and that model instance only, not the others. So my previous console messages are still there and I'm gonna add another one. 
in order to get a notification that a model has changed, I actually need to change something. So I'm going to use the set method to change the price of our Rainbow Roses instance to $20. So it's back to snippets.txt and highlight the line of code from line 75 to 76, highlight it and copy it. And I'm going to go back to my flower app.js file and paste this code directly below the code I already have. Save that. So I'm using the set method to change the price of the Rainbow Roses instance. Set takes two parameters, the first being the model attribute we want to change, and the second one being the new value of this attribute. So on line 24, I'm changing the price here. There's a reference to that I'm changing the price. And I'm giving it a new value of 20, which is $20. So this is saved. Let's go back to the browser and refresh. Yes, we have indeed gotten a notification that a model has changed somewhere. Now, I want to be more specific about this. I want to know not only when a specific model property has changed, but also what model has changed. And I can easily do this with Backbone. So I'm going to go back to snippets.txt. Starting at line 78 and ending at line 81. Copy that. And I'm going to go back to my single flower model.js file and directly below the code already inside my initialize method, I am going to code that. Yes, this code is indeed inside our initialize method. And we don't need these comments here. Now, everything is pretty much the same except for two things. Before, my change call was looking for any and all changes. Now, I've added colon price to the end of it. This version of the on method is looking for changes to a model's price property and nothing else. And here on line 19, I've updated the console message a bit. I'm using this.get to find both the name of the model as well as the price of the model, which all should be updated by now. So yes, this is saved. Let's go back to the browser and refresh. Yes, we see with this console.log message here, initialize has done exactly what we told it to do. Watch for a change to a model instance property and then alert us of the change. Changes actually happen.